This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Still Austin Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is a new rye blend called The Musician, first in a series because music has the ability to bring us all closer together, to make us feel more free and alive, just like great whiskey. Still Austin, owned locally, distilled in Austin, 100% Texas. Do you know what Jump the Shark is referring to? Do you know that turn of phrase? No. So in Happy Days, you're familiar with the show Happy Days? Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, there's that episode yeah. where Fonz jump, literally jumps a shark and everyone thought they that's like the downfall of that show. Emerald Rocks, how's it going, guys? Uh, back this week, finally. Uh, I know I haven't done a video show in a while. Uh, this week we've got Native Crowds. How's it going? Hello. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Remy. Remy, yeah, how's yeah. it going? Colin. Colin, I know Colin. Uh, so these guys have uh, an EP they put out last November, uh, mid-pandemic, uh, and I listened to it. It sounds fucking great. We're going to put links to that in the, uh, in the uh, description below. Uh, so guys, tell me, uh, we're going we're gonna to do the, the TV thing and just say, hey, tell me where does your music come from? Uh, from my mouth? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it comes from, you know, the lack of soul that you have. Yeah, but, yeah that's fair. You know? Yeah. Uh, no, like I started writing music, um, I started writing for this project in 2018 um, after a bunch of stuff had gone on in my life and I just needed to process it so I just started writing um, and then I had to take like a year break uh, oh. after I was writing it. I wound up in the hospital oh, and sure. uh, but yeah, no, I started writing in 2018, I had a different band back then and then when I got out of the hospital and had to do some like rehab on my hand and different stuff like that. We, uh, I met Colin and BJ and our other guitar player Chuck just over the course of that year and finally got all the stuff laid down and put out this last year and been trying to play shows again. So, fucking okay, hey, man. So, yeah. did, did you do music before this? I mean, obviously, you had another project. You've been playing music for like yeah, a long time. I, yeah, or? I've been playing, I've, I've been playing guitar since 2005 or six. Nice. Um, but like it was uh, a combination of like playing in churches or just playing like for other bands in the area. Um, I didn't really do like my own solo stuff until like 2018. Badass. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I, you know, I think I just met you for the first time last weekend. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I know most of the players around town, so you know, you're kind of new to me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but, uh, I really Colin speaks very high. <laughs> well, I, well I, that's strange of him to yeah, say. No, yeah, nice of me. Um, uh, nice, nice, nice to your back. I'm terrible, terrible, is, terrible he's to your awful. face, man. Yeah, he's awful. I do feel pretty new here, even though, like, I. Are you from here? So I I grew up in Borger. Oh, that's so yeah yeah yeah. Sorry, um, Borger. Yeah no <laughs> no uh, yeah I grew up there um, and then you know the different bands I'd play for I'd be around the area but I didn't really um, I started when I started writing all this stuff I just started playing open mics at the eight oh six and trying to workshop these songs and stuff but and then like I said we I was out for like a year so I kind of felt like any ground I'd covered was just gone, yeah. so we had to kind of start over, and then we started to start over, and then the pandemic shut everything down, Dude. so, like... Mm -hmm. Took the life yeah. out of everything. Yeah, it was really weird, but, yeah. So you're out for a year, just was a, there was surgery or something? Yeah, there? yeah, so I got, um, make the story really short and not too heavy, I got attacked in 2018, um, and had a, a pretty gnarly uh, wound in my back and in my wrist, <clears throat> and I had to have like uh, like 18 hours of surgery. They had to borrow like a nerve out of my arm and and repair all of the flexor tendons in my hand. Every time I shake your hand, I don't know if you notice, but like I can't open my thumb. I can't really open my fingers. Yeah. So I like, it was a hipster thing. I don't oh know. no, <laughs> <laughs> no! I, I literally had to like relearn how to how to use my hand and and then find a different way to play guitar oh, and all that stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, a fucking crazy story, man. I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't see that one coming at all. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. It's, it's, yeah, it was yeah. a, it was a wild, a wild. Uh, oh shit, a wild uh, time. You need silence. Yeah, you better silence your phone. It's always asshole. silence. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, we're we're not terribly formal here. You know? <laughs> no, just, just, no, not at all. Um, it was Chuck actually. It was like, oh, that's a guitar player. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but yeah, no, it was a, uh, it was a weird time, and and um, it was just like a a a. a, a, a a crazy thing that that happened and um i'm really glad i'm i'm grateful i'm still here because I, I i wouldn't i shouldn't be honestly but um but yeah no just um i spent like a year 
doing occupational therapy and then slowly like picking up a guitar again and um and then we met at a party just like a house party that nice. and uh like hit it off like he showed up late and i didn't know anybody i was like yeah, someone was someone was sitting out there playing some some creed i think and i walked up <laughs> i walked up and i grabbed the guitar from them <laughs> And I said, hey, can I play that for, for a minute? And then he was sitting out there, too, and he grabbed the other guitar. Everybody else went inside. Mm -hmm. We sat outside for an hour or so just yeah. jamming on some stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and we clicked. And I was like, hey, if you, if you, if you want a bass player, you know, you might as well, yeah. might as well get a good one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but for now, I'll work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Creed, huh? That's a good. Yeah, they were. They I'm glad to know what what inspires you. No, no, yeah. that's why I said stop. Just, uh, pick that bass up with, our, <laughs> with arms wide open, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was a weird. That was it, a, was a, it was a. It was a. It was an night. interesting night. Man. That's what I really like about Amarillo, man. Is like there's uh, the last year of just like meeting all these different people, and there's this really cool uh, community of of musicians that really want each other to succeed and yeah, they man. want to help each mm -hmm. other and. I mean, like, we've done so many shows with Elton. Um, oh, yeah, man. Like, Elton's... Shout Silver out Bullet, Elton, yeah. Silver Bullet, yeah. Bullet yeah. Dude Silver, Man. Silver Bullet, Dude Man, all Dude that Dash stuff. Man, all the mm -hmm. other band names that... Elton's is the hardest Elton. working man in Amarillo right now, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh. We had him on the show a few months ago. Yeah. yeah. Good guy. A, lot, a lot of heavy subjects, man. Elton's seen some shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's that's what's really cool is just all these guys have these stories and, and getting to just kind of, like, um, for me, moving here... I moved here in November... And um, and kind of finally feel like I'm like starting my life over after I had all these different things happen leading up to that attack. I just sort of like one bad thing after another every year, and um, and then I get out of the hospital and like now it kind of feels like okay now I can try to <clears throat> make something with what I'm doing and, and and start over and and then meeting all these really wonderful people. There's like a really cool community here in Amarillo that. Um, I'm really grateful to be a part of, and that they're letting yeah. me be a part of. That's one thing I love about our scene, man. You know, we've got so many, so many guys that are friends that play from different genres. You know, and they all hang out. You know, I mean, the, you'll see, you'll know, you'll see the metal guys hanging out with the country guys, and yeah. vice versa. I mean, you know? it's, we're in bands together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's that's the funny part. Yeah, like hip hop, you like Kane, man. Shout out Kane. You know, he you know he he hangs out with all of us. Uh, I just, I just love it. I've always loved that about the scene here. But, you mm -hmm. know, the purpose of the show mm -hmm. is to, you know, I do, I do th three different genres every week from, you know, three different bands, completely different, and just try to amalgamate everything because, yeah, man, we all just trying to do the same thing, man. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. Just a venting point. Yeah, yeah. it's so that's, it's that's for awesome. loving music, man. That's, that's so that's you moved thing. here in November. So did you record the the EP? So the way the EP is laid out, if you look at it, there's there's years on the ends of the track. So the first three tracks are, are we recorded uh, in 2020 with our friend Harvey from a band called Indigo. Shout out to Indigo. They're a Lubbock band. Really, really, really great good. Really, really good. Really, really, really great. Um, but Harvey, Harvey's been doing a lot of the producing for their records. And so, and I've played with Harvey in a couple of group, uh, bands down there. And so he recorded the first three tracks of that for us. And then the original plan with the EP was to take all these songs that are there. And I was going to record them in the house that I, I, I was living in at the time. I was, I was married for about seven or eight years. And uh, we got divorced. And so I was like, okay, I've got to write about this shit. And Dude. so, yeah. Yeah, so, I, and I was living, this, the, the house we were in was like, that was a house we bought. Like, that was our, like, family house. That was where we were going to kind of, like, figure things out together. And yeah, bro. so I was sitting in that house by myself for months. And so the goal was to record all of it in there. And produce it by myself, and then send it off to get mixed, and then go on tour and just kind of hand it out with like right. opening up for bands and stuff. But then I wound up in the hospital, so the first three tracks uh, never got recorded, and so we did those with Harvey, and then the last two are the ones that I did on my own. <clears throat> I just produced, I, I mixed them, and then we sent them to Harvey, and he kind of did some tweaking to match the rest of the EP. Nice. So yeah, so it's a, it's a mixture of all of these. This like two. It's really weird when I think about it now. Like the, the there's like a two year difference between like Lie of a Mission and like Find Yourself. Like I'm a different person between those songs, you know. Like That's just wild, vocally yeah. and and sort of like where the songs are coming from now. Like if I had recorded Lie of a Mission back then, there just would have been a completely different meaning and and, and feeling behind it. And so it's been yeah. It's, it's Dude, that, really crazy. That's that, that's that's funny that you mentioned that because that is like that's kind of how it works, man. It's mm -hmm. it's. it's 
our music is almost a funnel for our lives, and we take mm -hmm. all these experiences and we, you know we just capture them as we go, and we put them in one little bucket, you know. And it, 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 it kind of blows my mind when a when a band goes into the studio, like, all right, we're in the studio now. What do we do? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's write some songs. And so you know, I've never I've never understood that vibe. I've never understood going into the studio unrehearsed or not having an idea in yeah. mind. You know, just. Going, we have to make an album for making an album's sake, and that never. That, that's never, that's never. Never. <laughs> that's never gelled with never. me. You know? No, that's that's how that's how you end up with uh, insincerity. Yeah. Is, yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. You know. With arms wide open. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the things that I I, I will grab a guitar from somebody yeah. <laughs> and say that no sir. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's that's that's one hundred percent. You know. Well, it's also like it's sort of a the, to have the luxury to go into a studio and not have anything like that's sort of like a luxury thing. It's like oh, oh we have yeah. the money to like sit down you, and not do anything. If you've yeah. got the budget, you know, you know what I mean. You're, you're paying that engineer for. But, yeah, I would hate to do that. I would hate that pressure to to go in and and not have anything. And um, yeah. that's where like with the way this thing works, the way with Native Crowds sort of has panned out is most of all of the writing and stuff um, is is I, I I primarily do so like. The goal was I was going to produce all of it and record everything and then just bring guys on to come play. Um, there's a band I grew up listening to called Say Anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's the similar model, too. Max would basically do everything outside of, like, drums. He would do everything, and then they had, like, a touring band, and those guys played everything. And that was the original goal, and it's sort of how these guys now approach it is they're just waiting for me to get stuff written, and then we can kind of like, they obviously add their own flavor to it. It's interesting, because, you know, a lot of guys that I have on the show, you're the first one that's used the word produce, mm. or producer. That's why I like that, because that's kind of, that's where, you know, where I'm trying to position myself mm -hmm. with, with my bands. And, uh, yeah, that, that's a that, that's a whole different thing, because, you know, you're, you're in charge of the mix, you're in charge of the writing, you're in charge, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you culminate all of this. Yeah. And, you know, that... I, you know, I give uh, there's there's writing credit mm -hmm. to uh, to band members, but I mean yeah. ultimately, you know, you produce this product. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's like you, you know? that. That's how the EP is. Like they have they all have writing credits on it for sure. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, because they did, they they really brought a lot of life to the songs. But at the end mm -hmm. of the day, like, you know, like for me, when I'm writing, I try to look at the whole picture and kind of know, okay, where does the song or where does the record want to go? Because the goal is for us is to have I've already had. I already have uh, three different records I want to want to get done, and they're all kind of conceptually different nice. subjects. And so the goal is to you know like I'm trying to think. Okay, what am I trying to communicate in this first album? And in the songs, what does each song like? What is it going to look like? And what is what story is it trying to tell in the over the, the whole theme of the record? And and then when I have all of that, then I can show it to these guys. Like, hey, here's what I've got, and then they just make it better, which is. I'm really yeah. grateful for like yeah. they just take what I already have and they yeah. just make it they make it better like they're not like oh, I don't like that yeah. I'm gonna do something completely I, different I, I remember one of my one of my favorite memories of this band was he, he we were practicing in Borger at his at his old church mm. and he's like he brought this new song mm. and I thought I, I thought I was like I was like you know we played it and it was like a real upbeat you know pop punk and I was like Man, I really don't feel like we should be doing covers. I think we should be doing original songs. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, "No, this is an original song." Oh no, shit. yeah. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. it was like it's, there's, it's, there's sometimes, man, stuff feels it was, like it's it's this is too good for you to have written this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're yeah. not that smart, but I, you know, I didn't yeah. know I didn't know how to take. It. I was like, thanks. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's a very guised compliment. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very very smoky, but. <laughs> But man, is it a good song! It's one of my, I mean, one of my favorite ones we've I, ever done. I listened to uh, the production on some of that before the show, and I was, I was like, I didn't know what to expect. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Colin's such a hack piece of shit that I, just <laughs> didn't, uh, you know, I thought, man, this guy's wasting his time with him. But, uh, <laughs> but no, but no, man, was, like the production on it's fantastic. I, oh, I was, thanks, I was man. really impressed with the recording quality and yeah. and the content of the songs and the flow of everything. I was like, oh fucking man, this guy I, knows what he's doing. So I appreciate that, man. Yeah, like that's that's a combination of, of the work I put in and heart, like. And what's really cool, you're showing us your your rehearsal space, mm -hmm. like. That's literally we recorded in in Harvey's garage. He, had, you know, with their band, they they do all their rehearsals in their oh. garage, and and then he's just sort of like fitted that room to be like a studio. He's got he yeah. had this like. He had the, the the console and everything. We just did all of it in his garage, and he did all the all the mixing and, and stuff for the first half of the EP. And what is, our, is he in Lubbock? He's in Lubbock. Yeah, it's Harvey Garza. Harvey Garza. Yeah, he's shout out Harvey. Yeah. Love you, buddy. I miss you. Yeah. Um, he, miss you yeah. too. 
yeah <laughs> but no it's, it was such a cool it was a cool thing to, to get to do and well hang um, on is this guy hireable mm -hmm. Oof. yeah yeah he's a he's he, a so he's it's incredible the not not just like first of all he's a he's he, I'm just gonna gush about him he's an amazing drummer like, he's yeah, he, such he, a good drummer he's got he this is, like weird mind is. about drums um, but then like yeah he's just got this like ear and he's done a lot of that work himself like he just learned he's just teaching himself like you know like uh he'll he'll do all the research and and he just he's just studying like the producing side of it and and every every project that he's done he's just gotten better and better i'm sure he's done stuff after our stuff that sounds like way better than what we have you know because right. he's, he's just like he's constantly trying to learn and um because honestly i feel like that's sort of how <clears throat> i think that's how the music industry is sort of panning out at this point like it's it's a lot of it's like DIY, but like it's polished DIY. Like everybody's yeah, doing it themselves, but it sounds great. Well, you, you, it's hard to, is, if you have the ear for it. Yeah, yeah. If you have it's, the it's hard to discern. Uh, you know, a home project versus a big budget project anymore. You know, yeah. like people are learning. I mean, I didn't know shit from this when we started. You know, and right. yeah, I, I was lucky enough to have, you know, uh, Nathaniel Lerma. Shout out yeah. Lerma. Uh, to uh, engineer and uh, produce for me. Yeah, uh, is, I don't know Lerma, shit about Pro Tools. Yeah. I mean, good <laughs> yeah. lord, it's a nightmare. We had this big uh, snake ran in here, and we had this mm -hmm. big console and a and a big Mac and stuff. Big Mac, but uh, <laughs> but uh, and, you know, and he ran all that stuff for me, and he did a fucking stellar job. Yeah, you know, and it's but you know, I could have spent I could have spent five thousand dollars, you know, in the studio and gotten the same quality. You know, I mean. Yeah. You just don't know. The, 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 thank God it is becoming, you know, a little bit more level playing ground. Yeah, it's you becoming know? accessible. Middle ground is becoming a wider place. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you know? Yeah. more people are learning the language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and, you know, you know, I can, man, used to, you could, you could definitely tell when someone was a garage band mm -hmm. and when someone was, you know, had a little bit more of a budget. You know, there was, there was just that, hmm. You know, yep. There was no zhuzh on it, you know, and, then, <laughs> and now you know there's there's. I love that. Yeah. yeah, and it's so funny it. because that now now it feels like a lot of a lot of artists are trying to replicate at least I think at least in like sort of like the punk scene like mm -hmm. they're trying to replicate that lo-fi you know grungy like you know like it's a thing let's get this high quality recording and let's put a dirt filter yes, on it yeah exactly they're just trying to <laughs> trying to get that sound yeah. again because like technology is so good yeah. now that you, you yeah, know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of sterility yeah you know yeah. Like things things That's can a sound big word Colin good job things buddy. can sound <laughs> very sterile very fast you know it's it's one of those things you have to you have to kind of know what you're doing to make the digital sound analog yeah, that's that's what the trick is. I'm, I'm looking at this new console. Um, so there's a. I'm, I'm like looking. That word. <laughs> I didn't mean to be so condescending. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> so I, I use I'm, big words sometimes. I'm shopping <laughs> consoles right now, and so like the, the one I'm looking at is like a, a Mackie Pro FX V30. You know, it's like 24 mono inputs, mm -hmm. uh, but their their big uh, their big deal is like the analog preamps kind of round off the corners right. and all that stuff. You know, right. so you can have the you know the flexibility of digital, but the sound quality. Mm -hmm. Of analog, That's and you know, Tascam does the same thing. Uh, Zoom's got an L twenty, um, and they're all affordable, man. Like you know, yeah. this 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 thirty channel mixer I'm looking at, so, you know, it's about twelve hundred bucks. I mean, that's uh, you know. Thank God for Zounds because. Uh, uh, amen. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> shout out. Shout Zound. out from the broke musicians. Yo. Thank you. Thank you, Z Sounds. Zounds. I wouldn't have any of the shit that I have without. Yeah. That. Amen. I've got, I've got a pair of, of, uh, three hundred dollar. Uh, wireless lavalier mics that I don't even use, <laughs> but you know, they, if I want to do like a remote yeah, show, like that's, that. that's 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 yeah, they're they're life that, savers. That sort of thing is changing the game because you know, musicians' credit sucks too. You know, I mean, it, what credit? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I got a I got a divorce and years of unpaid bills. You know, back in mine up, and then I'm, then I you know went back to being a musician after that. So yeah, it's in the tank. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Thank God, it's out. Yeah, no joke. Yep. yep. So uh, tell me the what's the story with the name? Uh, honestly, it, it was. Um, it sounds real cool. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I well, no, like I I don't necessarily. It's sort of the, <laughs> oh my the meaning came afterwards, and it's not. There's not even really a meaning behind. Like there's not a, a solidified meaning behind it. Um, it was just kind of like trying to think of of cool names, and that one felt the the coolest. It felt like the 
it just felt right saying. It just and fits right. It yeah, fits it, right in, it dude. It fit. And then, like, as we started playing shows, the thing that, the thing about, the thing about us playing is, you know, for us, it's, we sing about a lot of sad stuff. We, you know, I mean, like, the, 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 the kind of journey that I've, I've been on is, has been uh, pretty tragic. And so the stuff I'm writing is in that, in that spot. And so for us, it's like, we play these shows and we sing these songs and we try to, for us, we like to be able to communicate to our the, the crowd that we're hanging out with and let them know that they're they're not alone in this sort of pain. Like there's yeah. there's uh, there's tragedy and grief and and sadness and on top, but as well, there's also this really joy. And for us, it's like it's really cool because we have to be around these crowds of people and commiserate with them, and then also like try to have a good time and be like it's okay that they both exist and and your story is important and you matter and. We just want you to know that you're not alone. I mean, literally, like, all of us have been through a bunch of stuff, mm-hmm. and everybody has. That's a thing. Everyone has their own tragedy and their own story that's yeah. painful. And for us, that's, you know, we, we want to have a good time. And we, you know, we... We, we don't want it. We do. We do, we yeah. Do have we a try good to time. have... Yeah, we have a good time. But, like, also, it's like, for us, it's like you... At any... I mean, that's kind of why we wind up playing so many different places. Like, we played... We opened for Lindsay Lane one time. We opened for... Oh, uh, we've opened for Gunner for Gunner for Red Ulan. We've opened for we're opening for Travis. Yeah, this we, we end up we end up. That's one of my favorite things. <laughs> you know, like as uh, someone Travis, that Travis Roberts. Travis Roberts yes, yeah, yes. I've, I've got to get him on the show. The next yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah. As as someone that you know plays plays like this, this is my passion project. This is my band. You know, mm-hmm. like as much as it is it's, Jeremy's band, it's my band as well. But as someone that comes from, you know, like playing country music i'm in that scene all the time it is it is so refreshing whenever i get to go play a show at a country venue mm-hmm. that is not country yeah, yeah. people that, at yeah. first people give us this look of mm-hmm. what's going on here yeah. <laughs> you know dude middle of the podcast <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I'm just fucking chill. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's the end of it. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, <laughs> that, we'll, we'll, we'll trim that out. So, uh, the, um, one of the things that I was, uh, running across was that I didn't find your name anywhere else. So, like, it's so fucking hard to find an original band name, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, I've got the dumbest band name in the world because mm-hmm. it doesn't exist anywhere else right, right now. And you got to do it. Yeah. And, and it's, but it, you know, it stands out with people. And so, like, yeah. when that's a that's a really good one. That's just like, hmm. As a record exec, I'm like, I'll buy that name. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The, the, it's, the, it's a good brand. The yeah. hardest, the the only thing we've run into was when we I, my our first our my yeah first, yeah native 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 clowns. Someone said native clowns one time, but then before that, my fir- our first show is before any of these guys were playing. It was in, I, I had my first full band show. Two weeks before I wound up in the hospital, it was at Golden Light. We had opened for Gunner, and um, the guys who were emceeing or whatever, um, they were like, "Oh shit, y'all got local natives!" Like, cause they, cause there's like an yeah. indie rock band called Local Natives. Oh, and they are, oh, they are, they are they, good. They're really, they're good. really good. They're really good. Um, so that's the only thing that's like people kind of get confused and, and but other than that, yeah, like that was also a big part yeah, of they, it. They, is, they, they get confused that they think they're gonna go see a good band. Yeah, and then they, get, <laughs> and then and they, they show they, up and it's not the band us, that they yeah. thought it was. But, but then they like us anyway. Yeah, I think that was also a, now you bring that up. That was a big part of it too. Is we're trying to find. I was trying to like I was going through these lists of names and I started I, I just see. googling, you know, making sure that it didn't exist and trying to find because for me like that's how I. Uh, that's how I am with my my personal like social media tag. Like anytime there's like a new social media that comes out, I try to get on there and immediately grab right. mine and try to grab the bands before yeah. someone else does. Um, which is such a strange time we live in that we have to think that way. But yeah, definitely, it's like you want um, yeah like a, a, a unique like name that people um, don't haven't heard of or can't find. Anywhere They're else. not gonna forget it just because it's it's yeah. right there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's on the tip of your tongue all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Let's take a quick break. That sounds uh, perfect to me. Yeah. I'm going to interlude to, uh, we're going to play Lies of Omission. Uh, with your permission, of course, yeah, of course I have yeah. to, YouTube, don't shut me down. Uh, we're going to put a little short uh, clip in here for Lies of Omission. We'll be back in just a minute. Hope you guys enjoy. Really? You wandered in tonight, unsure of it. 
made mistakes before, but now you're full of shit. You lied to me. You lied to me by leaving out the truth. You told me just enough to satisfy. of omission by native crowds uh send us uh, you know jump at the comments tell us what you think about that uh those guys are going to be playing uh where leftwoods leftwoods yeah so what, what I, day uh so we're we actually playing, got two shows this I, weekend. so i've got three things i'm playing solo at bomb city vodka on friday night at eight no shit i'm opening uh as far as i know so opening for drake from odd fellas there drake fisher yeah, yeah and then i'll leave from there and we'll play leftwoods uh that night uh at 10 with Pat Hardy, The Ugliest Color, and then us. And then Saturday, the 22nd, we're opening for Travis Roberts at Hoots. 
Travis. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and Hoots. Yeah, that's that's okay. the one that I'm I'm I, I'm I'm very excited about little, that. Yeah. Take it. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Th- that is that is a first of all that's like the venue in Amarillo really yeah, whenever you think great. about live music. Yeah. And then on top of that, we're playing. You know, another... we're, we're getting to bring our message mm-hmm. and our our little bit of, of light yeah. to that to that yeah. to that corner. You know, and it's. I, I love I love being the being the the wild card. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, like our, that's really what our band is. Yeah, we had that place open back up. You yeah. know, uh, I, I talked I to really Casey the uh, the other day, and uh, he told me about some of the stuff they've got going on. I'm hoping I can get my band in there pretty soon too. Oh, they've that'd got be uh, awesome. they've got a band called Dirty Honey that's playing uh, mm-hmm. next month. I'm gonna go check those. I guys saw that out. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited for the Hoot Show just because it's again it's another one of those where we we're gonna oh. show up in like it's you know. It's a country crowd, and most. Are we dressing country? No, I don't know. No. We'll see. Are we, we so, so we when we opened for Lindsay at the time, I don't think they knew who we were. So when the people who booked it, because it wasn't Lindsay that booked it, it was whoever did the booking for that show. They didn't realize that we we weren't we're not country we're not a country all. band. So we we're like, oh, that'd be so fun if we just showed yeah. up dressed like we're a country band. I wore a cowboy hat and everything. Oh, and I swore, <laughs> I swore, yeah. I would never wear a cowboy hat. Yeah. Well, and then, and then, so we did that, and then Lindsay and the crew were sound checking, and I remember, I, I typically get anxiety before a show anyway, but I'm like pacing back and forth, I'm like, we don't belong here, we don't belong here, we don't belong here, and BJ stops, like, shut the fuck up, of course we don't, and then we got up, and we went, anyway. like, it's like, you know, like that's, of course we don't, man. Yeah, of course we don't, but like, shout out BJ, it's been shout really, BJ. yeah, it's been really, that's, again, it's just like, one of our favorite things is being able to just go in these places that we and, don't and really get to come in, and it, that that would have been a cool. I wish I'd have known about that yeah. show. You know, part of hell half of the reason I'm doing this show is just so I know what's yeah. going on around town. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm watching the calendar real close every week. Yeah. Shout out Lindsay, by the yes, way. Lindsay, yes, Lindsay. Lindsay, uh, Lindsay, and Brian were one of the first ones that uh, did the video show with me. Shout yeah. out Brian. Yeah, that's they're, a shredder they're, right there. So, that is a shredder. They're such Mr. sweet Wilson. people too. They're so nice. It was so, what was really cool it was in Borger, so it was like a hometown show for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. And then, you know, to get to go play, it was one of the first big things that happened in Border, you know, um, sort of like mid, after, the, after, after pandemic, pandemic stuff. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, Lindsay and, and, and Brian and all of them were just so nice to us. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like, despite, you know, the show that we tend to put on, like, it was just, again, it was just another one of those, like, kind of test testimonies or testaments to the yeah. town yeah. that, you know, everyone's just, like, Everyone just wants music to go well. Just keep town. going, yeah. yeah every, you, everybody everybody in this town wants to, everybody to succeed. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's the thing about, you know, the table that we're sitting at is, like, we got plenty of chairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's really what it's about, yeah. is just yeah. being open and being 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 loving and being supporting of other people. And that's, mm-hmm. that's I had a conversation with a, with a, with another musician the other night, uh, and it was, it was, it was this, is, this is how we do it. We we it's it's all about building each other up because mm-hmm. we all are growing together. We're all learning together. Like we really are. That's and that's the you can either yeah. choose to be a part of it or mm-hmm. you can choose to not. Yeah, me and one being a part of it too, is yeah. so much better. Yeah, it's so much oh, yeah, better. Man. It's yeah. so much better. I, I'm so thankful for my my friends in this community. You know, I mean, uh, I I don't know what to say, man. I mean, it's just there's just we're just all friends. Just all. It's all family, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody's doing a different thing, but we're all we're all there at each other's shows. We're all supporting. Yeah. We're just, mm-hmm. you know, we're just figuring it out as we go. It's 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 beautiful. Huh. That's that's you're very beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank it's nice, you. It's a nice hat, by the way. Oh yeah. Nice thank hat. you. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is this is a good time to bring up my nice sponsors. Hey guys. Way. New uh, new product from Still Austin. This is called the Naturalist. It is a uh, it is a uh, gin, American gin. And it's good. And, uh, you know, Mr. Colin and I are still enjoying uh, the uh, the whiskey. whiskey. This is, uh, and this is a shameless plug, I know, but, you know, that's, they're my sponsors. What do I want to do? Cheers hey, to they, that. They, they, if they keep on you giving know, me cool hats. They, they gave me, they gave me a, when I, you know, when I told Jake that I had a, a mentally challenged kid that would really like a hat, he was like, <laughs> oh, man, that's that is that is that's great, man. I'll get him my hat. What's what's his affliction? I'm like he's a bass player. Uh, so, oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. I, I made the mistake of telling him that, that Still Austin was my favorite, and I stand by it. And I know I'm kind of doing it a disservice by shooting it, but you know, <sighs> hey guys, keep sending me booze. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, 
so uh, so speaking of Bomb City, so you're playing at the Bomb City at that that joint over in Cleveland Street, the distillery. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've never been there. I'd love to have them as a sponsor, by the way. Uh, but uh, I've never been in there. I want to check that place yeah. out. Yeah, I, as far as that, like originally, I know um, Drake had messaged me a few weeks ago about it, and then we were trying to get a show here in town because the hard part about the hard part about the band is so Chuck, our guitar player, lives in Lubbock. Mm-hmm. So we try to capitalize as much time as we can when we're together. It used to be I lived in Borger, BJ and Colin were here, and Chuck was in Lubbock. Yeah, we used to be in three different towns. And then at so, one point in time, we were in four different yeah, towns. Yeah, because he was in yeah, you yeah, were I was, like I was down, down in Fort Worth Chuck for a little bit. Chuck Yeah, Chuck from Lubbock. Chuck, old Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Taylor. Chuck, Chuck Taylor. Yeah. That's his real fucking name? That's his name, Chuck, Chuck Taylor, Taylor Parton. Does, does he wear Vans? No. No, he, he, wears, he wears Chucks. <laughs> he wears Chucks. Yeah, nice. He wears you Chucks, know? yeah. Um, but yeah, so we would... Anytime we had like a show, it's like one of us was driving like three hours to, or even like rehearse. Mm-hmm. That's the hard. That's also been yeah, kind of we, the weird thing about us as a band is like we very rarely get to rehearse. We usually like rehearse the day of the, the day show. of the show, yeah. which that again like to bring it back up. But like that's why like I've had to like kind of produce everything and have yeah. the whole songs sort of done to give to them. Like yeah. here's what we're doing, and then they just learn it. And when we get together, like okay, let's make sure that we got everything together. And then go from there. It's fucking yeah. crazy. You know, I know a lot of guys that have bands that are, you know, the members are scattered all over hell and half of Georgia, like uh, like Landelius. You know, shout out Landelius. His, he's here. Uh, and then um, his drummer and bass player in Oklahoma. No, his drummer and bass player in Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. And his singers in, like, in bumfuck Colorado or some shit mm-hmm. like that. So, like, it is a big deal for them to get together and rehearse, yeah. you know. yeah. yeah. Um, but that's that's the cool thing about being being at the with a group of musicians that is at the caliber that we all are at. You know, is we we get our time that's separate away from it. You know, we have times when we're working on new songs and we really don't know. We have to we have to put a lot of faith in each other. Mm-hmm. We yeah. really do. Like we really have to put a lot of faith in each other that we're going to show up and at the very least have listened to the idea or at least have spent some time on it. Yeah. Talked about it. You yeah. Know? yeah. Don't look at me like that. Don't yeah. look at me like that. Yeah. Maybe charted it out, perhaps. So that's the yeah. thing. <laughs> no, dude, like, I mean, I, so that's, so for me, like. I am, I am kind of, I am kind of pot calling the kettle black right yeah. now. Well, no, but like, I, that's part of it. Like, I, so I grew up doing church music. So, like, I've had to, like, take a bunch of those skills mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and use them with the band, you know, so like, handy. it's super handy, like, and that's, yeah. I've, I've, that's what I've learned is, like, there is this, like, whatever, whatever people think about church and church music and stuff like that, like, I get it, it's valid, I understand, but there are some really interesting things I learned from doing that, that oh, um, help me be able to, like, you know, uh, give people what they need to s- succeed in what we're doing as a band, you know, like, yeah, whether yeah. it's charting stuff out, it's making sure that, you know, if uh, it, it, making use of the rehearsal time we have, all of that stuff yeah. has just been. It's. It's yeah. It's, it's so it's so helpful. You know, and it's, yeah, the, uh, it's the trusting thing that's really been, and that's I I I have this tendency to be a pretty big control freak about things, mm-hmm. and yeah, things, mm-hmm. and uh, so for me, it's, <laughs> a, it's been huge and and really comforting because like my friends, these guys are my friends, and they I, I I'm trusting. I'm trusting them a lot with these songs mm-hmm. that are incredibly personal and, yeah. and meaningful to me, um, and that you know they're they're like semi autobiographical, and they're also just sort of like you know they're they're parts of what I've been through or what I've processed, and 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 they're 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 extensions of me, and I'm like I'm trusting you guys with this, and um, and they've just done really wonderful things with it. It means a lot to me, you know. It, That's pretty cool. And it means it means the world to to us too, you know, like. The fact that we're in a in a in a group with a creative writer, with with someone that that is really 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 talented, mm-hmm. that he's giving us the permission and the ownership and impossibly this. handsome. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness, that mustache oh. does something. Does something. If I wasn't brown, you could tell I'm red. <laughs> oh. uh, Burnt Sienna. It's it's, <laughs> it's it's really awesome to just know that that like, you know, you can go work somewhere. You know, and it's it's just a job, until you find a way to yeah. to have passion about it, which has never been a question with this band. Like that's that's my favorite thing about it. I've never I've never I've never once been like, oh man, 
I really don't want to play these you songs. You can tell if someone's phoning it in. Yeah, you know? I, every yeah. the the one of my favorite things is that I have I have actually had emotional experiences in our rehearsals, not even just on stage, just playing these songs by ourselves with each other. We have we have this camaraderie, you know. This it's, mm. it's, it's a beautiful thing. We are, we're all we're all there together. Mm. We're all experiencing the same thing, and we experience it very intensely. And that's what makes us so energetic and so like we we want to spread this love we want to spread this light of like we are glad that you're here yeah nice yeah, yeah. And, it, and it shows uh, well i'm looking forward to the show that's uh what, what day is that show it's gonna be friday friday at left friday at left woods and saturday at hoots in saturday at hoots friday is the 21st 21st, 21st and then the 22nd second. yes mm-hmm. i am not gonna be in town oh man i wish i wish i, I wasn't either to, i'll have to catch you guys uh, the next time around. Yeah, well, we're we're gonna try to do some more. So what? Um, so ugliest colors? That's your other band? Yes, that's 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 my project. Okay. Yeah, um, we're we're a little bit a little bit more country, but we're a I like to call us a jam band. We're yeah. We just we just play guitar. That's that's all it's. What, it's all guitar. What, what is all, what is the ugliest color in your opinion? Oh, it's a little bit of everything, you know. Yeah. That's the point, like. It's a, it's a mixture of everything. We don't we don't ascribe to a genre. Yeah. Because we can get up there and do whatever we want. I would say like mustard yellow. Yeah. No, it's oh. it's closer. You put you put everything together. It's a it's a weird sort of shitty shade of brown green. Yeah. Yeah. Brown green. Like, yeah. It's poop but brown. yeah. Like poop brown. But the thing about those Seven like the the perfect. ugly colors, man. They make all the pretty ones pop. That's a good that's, point, too. That's, that's what it's about. Oh, yeah. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. That's, that's, wow, did you just make that you, up just now? Actually, i got to give credit to my bass player, Jason Hodges, on that one. Oh. Haji, yeah. shout out Haji. Yes, sir. Also. I need to get Haji back on here without uh, the other guys that happened last time. Uh, <laughs> that, that went, I, don't, you know, I heard that that went really well. It, it, it went yeah. really well. Except, that's, that's what I heard. You know, I mean, it is what it is. But, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's really cool. It's me. Uh, it's me, uh, Josh Fitch, Jason Hodges, and uh, BJ Dyer, and it's it's really cool because what we what we did is you know I'm 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 also a you know I, I, I aspire to be a songwriter. I've written written a couple, you know, but uh, it's it's just one of those things. It's meant to be an be an outlet for. I'm, I'm hearing BJ's name a lot. Is he is he hitting getting that drummer affliction where like he's in five bands? He's in, he's in every band. Yeah. Well, okay. you know, whenever you're whenever you're a good drummer and you yeah. can play everything, that's yeah, the way really that's good. the way it happens. You know. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm good. I uh, appreciate it. But I might I might by the end of the end of the day, but need to. I'm still. I'll I'll I'll, I'll do it for you. Yeah, I'm still. I'll do it for you. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's really cool. It's uh. It's it's a little bit more more country than than I ever thought I would would have really? would have wound up as. But as I've grown as a as a musician, as I've as I've grown as a as a songwriter, there's this passion in me to play songs that tell stories. You know, that's yeah. that's that's the whole thing Absolutely. for me. You know, and it's it's really cool. It's really exciting. You know, we were we were talking about it at our break. You know, it's like like my favorite experiences is playing with with people that I love. Number one, first and foremost, doesn't matter what style of music that we're playing. It's just playing with people that I love, that love me, and that love the music. That's yeah. that's all that it's about, and that's all that the ugliest color is. You know, that's all it is. And it's spelled with a U. Oh yeah, like it's like like, like British, fancy British color. C O L O U R. So you are the unnecessary U. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Called that's a little little bit a little bit of color Lure. there. Color. Lord. Yeah. Yes. Ugh. Yeah, that's a, that's 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 my little thing. That's my little love child. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Natives crowds. Natives. Let's try that again. Native. Cr- native still, crowds. We got you. We shout got you out, still late. Austin. Uh, <laughs> native crowds. Good job. <laughs> playing Friday at Leftwoods. That's the twenty first at Leftwoods, and then Saturday the twenty second at Hoots. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, we didn't we didn't even go over who, who else is in the band. So it's you so it's, and you. Yeah, me and Colin, and then BJ, BJ is on, on drums, and then Chuck Taylor on guitar. Chuck yes. Taylor, I can't get yeah. over that shit. Yeah, it's it's so, beautiful. Yeah. It is it is beautiful. Yeah, I, I love I love that. Yeah, there's wonderful wonderful people. I'm very grateful. Like we were saying outside, it's just been like really cool. And the you know I've only been here since November, and I've come in and out, but like since moving here, you know people have been really nice and welcoming, yeah. and 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 I feel. You know, I feel like I'm. Well, be, folks around you know, here like that. Beca- you know, yeah, I feel like I'm yeah. becoming a part of this place, and that's you know, 
I love it. Well, I mean, you're wearing the colors. Yeah. I am. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. And you know, on the greatest rock and roll and music podcast in Amarillo, and yes. the only one, as far as I know. So. <laughs> so I I've, I've fucking love it. Yeah, no, yeah. this is... Uh, well, uh, guys, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna put links in the description for uh, you know their Spotify link, Facebook, uh, some of their calendar stuff. Uh, look for uh, Native Crowds and Lo- Ugliest Color uh, Friday the twenty first at Left Woods, uh, and then Saturday the twenty second at Hoots. Who are you playing with it? Uh, uh, Travis Roberts. Roberts. Travis, Travis Roberts. Travis Roberts. In the Shout out Travis. Travis. Travis mm-hmm. is supposed to be on my show here pretty soon. I got to talk to uh, him and and Audrey about that here pretty yeah. soon. BJ uh, also plays for them. Yeah. Does he really? Yeah. Yep. He's a it, 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 that, That's the funny thing about the music scene. Everybody plays with everybody. That's yeah. a beautiful thing, man. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful nobody, thing. Nobody calls me anymore. <laughs> 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 All right. Everyone rocks. You guys have a great weekend. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean... So the stuff I went through in, 20, in 2018 definitely... Um, so a quick backstory, like 2015, I, I'm working at the church. I'd started working at the church when I was 20. And before that, I was really active anyway. I mean, I grew up in youth group. I learned guitar in church. I did all of that. Started working as a, a worship pastor um, at 20. Got married at 21. And then 2015, I've been working in ministry. I also took over youth. So, like, my spiritual, like, journey was, like, my job was so entangled with my own spiritual spirituality. Yeah. And that's a weird thing to navigate. It is. It's, it's, uh... How old are you? 31. 31, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, it's such a weird thing to, like, it, I still I still have this, like, difficulty separating the two. Like, my, whatever spiritual health is was so tied to, like, job performance in my mind. Oh, wow, yeah. That, like, if I wasn't doing my job right, then that must mean I'm not spiritually healthy. And so I was trying to process all that, getting incredibly burnt out, and then 2015, my mom dies the day before Thanksgiving. Okay, I'm sorry. And then, I appreciate that. Then 2016, I lose my job. Like, literally, like, almost a year to the day, I lose my job in the church. Um, and then, um, we're recording more, I guess. Doesn't matter. Um, and then, uh, where uh, and and then uh, 2017 was when my wife leaves, and then 2018 was when I wound up in the hospital. And part of that story, when I wound up in the hospital, that attack, uh, my friend was with me, and she died that night. Man. God damn! Are you fucking serious? Yeah, yeah. So like, there's all this like really awful stuff that happened, you know. No, I saw that scar on your arm. Is that what that's from? This, yeah, that's what this is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I ha- and then yeah. I have yeah. I have this here. And I have this, and I have this huge gash in my back. And this scar is the... Which I always accidentally scratch. <laughs> yeah. This, this, I don't feel it. So, um, okay, good. this scar is, they borrowed a nerve from this part of my arm. Right. And they used it to repair the nerves in my wrist. This is why I'd say that he is twice that is the guitar player. That's fucking bananas, player. man. That is bananas. Yeah. Twice the guitar yeah. player I will ever be because he's had to learn <laughs> it twice. Learn it twice, yeah. He's had to learn it twice. But all that to say, the point of all that, I, I, I hesitated bringing that up in the beginning because I didn't want it to get so heavy at the front end, but like... Yeah, like my you know my friend died that night, and she showed up in my life like right around the time that my wife left and um, became my best friend. Was all this tied together the night that she died in your attack, or was mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. 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 Bro. Yeah. So um, she was in, she was in this um, she was in this really abusive situation she was trying to get out of, mm-hmm. and um, and it she was taking the steps to get out of it, and it just it was. It just didn't go well. Man, I'm sorry about well, I, that. I appreciate that, man. That, that's um, that's crazy. But all of that to say, all of that to say, the point is, is um, all of that stuff, I had to really like, kind of like, examine what I still believe and don't believe about right. divinity and the universe, and um, there's still some things I really hold on to that that um, about about Jesus and about God that I still I still have those things there yeah, but absolutely I do. but also like there was because my job and my spirituality were so intertwined I've had to like to try to do a bunch of work to kind of unravel all of that yeah which is hard because then like I have these like bitterness things about religion and and all of that stuff that I've had such to really a big work part through. of your life you yeah. know and, and uh, you know 
I mean, when you're in the music scene, you're surrounded by heathens, you know? I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of people that are, you know, a lot of doubters. Sure. Coming here. You know, faith, yeah, I say this, I mean, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a religious guy. I'm not a, a faithful guy. I, but I believe that faith is a gift. Mm. Faith is a gift. And if you have that, then you have something that, that a lot of people don't have. And right. so if you, and if, yes. you can, if you can adhere to that, um, you know, you've got something special. But, but you know, you got to take your story, your balance, everything right. that's happened to you, and figure out if that works with right with with the rest of your life. Well, you know? and I think also the thing about it is, but when I was when I was, and I don't, it wasn't the church's fault, and it was just honestly for me, it was just young arrogance. Um, I I wanted so desperately to be right about everything because as in your twenties, that's all you want to do, man. Yo. And I just happen to be part of, of a religion. When you're forty seven, you still want <laughs> right, that. right? You know, <laughs> uh, but like I just I I wanted so desperately to be right, and then um, and that that hurt a lot of people. I I not I think I know it hurt a lot of people in my life, and so when I it, really when I got out of the hospital. Um, and really, while I was in the hospital, there was all these like really interesting moments where I really had to look at, okay, this thing that I believe, do I still believe it? Yes. Do I? St- but am I so concerned with like trying to be right anymore? Mm-hmm. And and for me, just like with with age and everything I've been through, I'm just like I'm less concerned with. I might be wrong, you know. I might be wrong. Yeah. And 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 I'm okay with that. And I love and I love people who don't believe. You know, like that's the thing you said. Like we in all in in, wrong, you know? in the music scene, we're surrounded by a bunch of heathens. But the reality is, like church folk are just as much heathens as oh, people. Surely, you know what I mean? Surely. Like, and and so for me, I think it was really just kind of like accepting, like I, it doesn't really matter who who I'm around. Like I just like people. I, it doesn't it, whether you believe or not. And there's it's, so many it's, people. It's not even a, it's not even a like thing. It's, yeah, it's, no. it's, it's loving. Yeah, thing. man. You know, I it just, doesn't it doesn't matter what you're exactly. It doesn't yeah. matter what you're you know because like him and I actually have really similar 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 backgrounds. I I also grew up doing church music like mm-hmm. that's that was my first that, yeah. my first my first time ever picking up a bass was last minute bass player didn't show up at church and I wanted so badly just to be on stage and just to be playing music yeah. and I said. I can play bass. I could not play bass. <laughs> the first time I played bass, I broke a fucking string. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like a toe chain. How do you exactly. break that? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like it's 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 just fearlessness, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think the 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 rea- the whole thing of um every all the stuff that I went through and and really having to like deal with losing my friend. That was really hard, you know, to to this person who who because before that I was I was I was suicidal I didn't really want to be here I saw no reason I, I it's In not there. it's not even that I it's not even that I wanted to die I just couldn't find a, a lot of reasons to stay and then yeah. and then uh, then Julianne shows up in my life and and sees me and cares and 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 becomes my best friend and um, and I I looking back on it now and we, we I say this from stage a lot. Um, mm-hmm. That um, if I hadn't have stayed, I wouldn't have met her, and my life wouldn't. I, I she she changed my life. She changed me as a person. Whether she was still, whether if she was still here now or not, she she changed me. And um, and I had other friends too that were like integral to that that season of my life. But it was just sort of like it's sort of hard to ignore this really powerful impact that was so short. And and um, and this profound. really yeah profound wonderful lady who showed up in my life. And and. Um, if I hadn't have stuck around long enough, I wouldn't have met her. Dude, yeah, honor that friendship. Yeah, and so honor that friendship. That's that's the and for me, it's like now this breath because like, dude, I I shouldn't have I shouldn't have survived that night. I really shouldn't, and and I did, and this this uh, neighbor downstairs found us, and I you know it was like three in the morning, man, and the paramedics showed up and they found me, and um and for me now it's been this like this breath in my lungs isn't just mine now, it's it's hers. And, um, do, and so, do you, can you talk about that? Do you, I mean, so like, I mean, so we're, we're creating a lot of, uh, visceral dissonance and curiosity mm-hmm. into the situation. Mm-hmm. Is this something you can talk about, about what happened? I mean, I, yeah, I, I can, yeah, I don't have a problem with it if that's okay. what you're asking. Some people do. I mean, you yeah, know. no, I, for, for me, it's been, it's a part of my story, you know, and it's, 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 uh. A, a profound thing that I um, um, it, it just ch- it changed a lot of stuff for me. Okay. 
it, it, put, it put it put a, well, and it, honestly, it put a lot of things in perspective too. Because part of one of the there's so many facets to this thing that happened, but one of the significant things was um, when I when I woke up from so they're taking me into the ER and they're asking for an emergency contact number, and the only number I knew was my ex-wife, oh. and we had just gotten divorced like in May, and this happened in September. I hadn't spoken to her since. And so I give them that phone number. That's the only number I have. And the next morning when I wake up from surgery, because they're like sewing my back up, they, I had this, I had a, a chest tube in my, my, across my chest the entire time I was in the hospital Yo. to get fluid off my lungs. Um, the first person I wake up and see is my ex, you know. And that 10 days I was in the hospital, she came and saw me maybe four or five times. Wow. And we buried the hatchet. And Because yeah. honestly, like, the thing I just went through is like kind of like put my divorce in terms perspective where For it's like sure, yeah. you know like yeah that sucked and it was heartbreaking and 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 i had a lot of stuff i had to process as a person like what what was my what was my responsibility of that marriage ending what was her responsibility um and all of that like just sort of got so much smaller where like now we're friends like literally her, she she and her boyfriend came to our show at golden light a few weeks oh, ago nice. you know what i mean like yeah, and like some man. of the songs i'm singing like have to do with her and she's like I get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and so like, <laughs> that stuff is so strange. You can have a lot in common. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I, I just, there was so much about that night. Well, but what was the scoop of the attack though? That's what I'm getting oh, at. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. Why, why were you attacked? What happened there? Okay. So, um, I'm trying to think the best way I can tell the story as uh, part of my story that doesn't. Do you want me to, do you want me to no, like, see if I can feel the language or? No, no, no. Okay. It's, I, I'm just trying to think, cause I'm trying, I, I've talked about this before just say what say what you think and take a deep breath and say, well, say it, the truth. Well, it's more so I'm trying to think about the other, like my my Your friends shot. friends family. That's the main thing. I just don't want to get to yeah. um, the 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 short of it is um, this abusive situation that she was in. This guy was gaslighting her and was emotionally and mentally abusive to her, um, and she was trying to figure out if she was gonna get out or not and she started making taking the steps to get out and um and he just wasn't he he didn't didn't like that he's a this monster is a sociopath who they luckily he's locked up now that was, that yeah. was my next question yeah, yeah no he's yeah he's 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 locked up um Fuck, man. yeah but like so she was making these taking these steps to get out and um the whole time uh she had me and another friend of ours that were just kind of there whenever she, you know, she needed us. And, and, um, I, I had ever, I was driving from Borger to Amarillo like four or five times a week just to hang out with her. Cause she was like my best friend. She was really all that I had. And she also, the thing about Julie was that she wasn't all of my friends in Borger. They all kind of knew the situation with me and my ex. And like, we were, both of us were friends with all of them. And so it was this like weird thing to navigate. And so it was like really refreshing. I found this person who wasn't connected to any of that, who could just be there and just was willing to yeah. listen and take my phone call at like four in the morning when I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel so like yeah. out of it. And um, at that time I wasn't drinking. So it was just kind of like in my own head, which is a, uh, yeah. Dealing with yeah. reality, yeah. sober, fuck, Bro, well, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, like I, I didn't start drinking until I got out of the hospital. I had never had alcohol ever until I got out of the hospital. Uh, yeah, so, um... Don't go to the hospital. Yeah, don't, don't. You'll become an alcoholic. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> um, but no, so she, yeah, no, so she, yeah, she was trying to get out of the situation. She had already, she'd made steps and, and, uh, was, um, you know, told him to leave. And, and one night he, he wasn't happy about that and, uh, showed up and, uh, busted into her place and, and, uh, attacked us and, um... Yeah, he just, um, like I said, he stabbed me in the back in my wrist. God damn. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he was just, he just went on this sort of rampage. And, um, I just got oddly, um, and, and, and still sometimes like, uh, survivor's guilt's incredibly real. Yo. Um, I just like, I, I don't understand. This is one of those things where I've had to like kind of process what my belief system is and, why is there a why that I'm here and thinking like it should obviously like if I could have traded places with her I would you right. know because I, I I think she's she's such a 
she's such a beautiful person and, and everyone who met her thought that and um she should be here she should be like painting and doing the dope shit that she's really good at and uh yeah so like um you know i i this neighbor downstairs she found us and i was like you know was bleeding out and out of it and in and out of consciousness and stuff and yeah they it was crazy man and he the guy tried to flee the state and they found him in new mexico the next day and um, and then the years are all blurry now, but like one February, it was either 19 or 20 of February, it was probably 20, I think, um, he, they, they, um, they sentenced him and so he's, he's locked up and he'll be there for a long time. So, yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy. Um. Is that something that's worth drinking about? <laughs> I, I think the answer is yes, is what I think. Would you like one? Just one? You boys do a shot. I'll take one, yeah. Man. And that's... That's... Every time. It's so strange, too. That is a crazy story, yeah. man. Like, Every time. That, that, this, is, this is the wildest story on Emerald Rocks before, man. Wow. It, you know, everyone comes from, from somewhere. Yeah. That, that is, so, man, I'm... Really thankful you're here. Well, thanks for that. Is me. that's that's our that's Let's our band this. slogan. Let's do this. Yeah, glad you're here, I'm man. Glad you're here. I'll drink to that, my friend. I'm grateful you let me tell that, man. I I, I go back. And I'm glad you did it. because that that that's probably a hard story to tell. It's you know, yeah. For me, the hard thing. I just like I'm the kind of I'm the kind of person I I, I can't just like. There, there, I, I find meaning all, probably almost too much in everything. Yeah, I do the same thing. And, and so, <laughs> so... It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, so, like, I... I and, and also, like, for me, the biggest thing about, the, about everything that's, that happened was, um, you know, I've developed now these relationships with, with Julianne's family mm -hmm. that I had never met. Like, the first time I spoke to her mom was on the phone. I was in the hospital. Yo. You know, like, I met her, I met her dad. He drove into the state and I met him in the hospital and, 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 you know, her, her siblings, all these people that, um, I see their faces and I see her and them. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, I can't, I can't waste that. I can't waste no, being dude. here, you know? So, no. cause like there's this, if for some, yeah, yeah. I can't use my hand and that's frustrating and, 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 you know, like, um, I, I, I I think I'm, I, before everything happened, I thought I was a pretty good guitar player, you know? And so, like, for me, it's like, in my mind, I know what I can do. And so I get discouraged sometimes because I can't do what I want to do. But at the same time, that, like my divorce, is such a small thing in comparison to the fact that my friend isn't here and that I am. And I got to do something with that, man. Like, and, and there's, there's, um... And also, it's this, like, balance of, like, I'm, yeah, it's sad, and I'm, I'm full of grief. Like, it doesn't feel like it right now, but it's because I'm just so, I'm so used to telling my story, but, like, yeah. dude, it's, it, it does, it's, like, I miss my friend every day, and I, I think about yeah. her all the time, yeah. and, um, but at the same time, it's, like, I've just learned, because, like, those four years, there's horrible thing after horrible thing after horrible thing, um, that, that grief and joy coexist, that they're not like you feel this thing and then you can feel this thing. Like some sometimes that's what happens. But I think that if there's a way to find to be okay with, I'm feeling really sad because my friend's gone, but I'm here with wonderful people talking about music, and both those things you, are wonderful. At you're the same you're time. not disrespecting your friend's memory by no. doing this. No, yeah. That, in fact, you, you might even be honoring it by I, continuing I, I to tell the story so. and yeah. I think so moving forward with it and you know letting that situation affect you the way it it has yeah i mean it happened there's no changing it yeah so you know you honor that that turning point in your life yeah and continue to tell the story and continue to make your music and continue Dude, to yeah. love and honor your friend yeah well because she that. made she made she she was glad that i was here you know, like she, and, and so for me, it's like, that's why we tell people that we're glad, it's like, literally every yeah. time we get a chance, we're like, I'm glad yeah, you're yeah. here, man, because like, literally there's, there's no telling when we're not, and, yeah, and, um, but, 
as long as everyone's man, as long as you're here, like there's there's there's, there's, a purpose. there's something there, there's man, and 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 it's not it's not even yeah, like it's it doesn't even have to be this like really heavy, profound thing. The fact of the matter is, is like every person's breath is so important and so beautiful, and the the fact that that you know. We, we want people to be able to exist with us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 everybody's part of this energy field, you know, like that's, that's all mm -hmm. it is. And we want everybody to be mm -hmm. a part of it. Yeah. And we're glad that everybody's contributing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. I just, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm still processing a lot, but, um, you know, I, I, I do this thing. Uh, for, uh, the thing I'm learning right now is like learning to do all this for me. Yeah. Because for the first, like, first year of being out of the hospital, a lot of it was like, I've got to do this for her. And knowing Julianne and, and, and the conversations we would have all the time, I, I, I hear it in my head. I hear her saying, it's like, bro, I, you fucking do this for you. Stop talking about me. And I'm like, uh, it's like hard not to because she's just, she's yeah. such a sweetheart. Well, um, it's, 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 it's this beautiful thing of like, you're not... I don't feel like you're doing it for her. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a, you're doing it because of her. Yeah, sure. You know, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not like that's the reason why. Oh, sure. That's yeah, just no. a big, yeah, motivating factor. Mm -hmm. Like I, I one hundred percent believe that you're doing this for yourself. Yeah, and I, yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I'm. It's, I'm proud of you, dude. Well, I'm fucking proud of you, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah. that. Are we gonna kiss? I mean, no, I don't want. Can to. you cut the camera? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Native crowds, Friday, <laughs> Left Woods, 21st, Saturday, 22nd at Hoots. We're glad you're here, man. Glad you're here. Remy, thank you, man. Of course, man. Thank Thanks you, for having Colin. Me. Sir. Thank you. I know we cut earlier, but I had to hear this story, and I had to share this story. So we're putting this, uh, you mm -hmm. know, post the stinger. So, yeah. anyway. Love you guys. Emerald Rocks, uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us. Check out Still Austin, and uh, really we'll see good. you next week.